I get what you're trying to cheer me up, but I'm not sure about this. Hmm. Baked sweet potatoes make everything better. Baked potatoes! You know what, I kind of agree with her. I do love me some baked with sweet potatoes. Maybe not with sweet variety, but just baked potatoes in general. We've got permission to light a fire. It indicates that a nearby bucket full of water. Internally, not noting that it was, wasn't what I meant, I gaze into a crackling fire. Just staring into the flames is pretty calming. Somehow, just look at the blazing fire, it can really chill you out. Apparently, there's a TV show where I just looped video of a crackling in half. How about it's one of those, um, is it Swedish or Finnish slow channels? Ijigo seemed to think this is a good idea, but then she also asked if people actually watch it. The viewing figures are apparently quite high. Perhaps it's aimed at the kind of people who put a TV on as background noise, since silence is lonely. Ringo nods sagely as she informs us. It's probably good for when you're worn out. I totally just want to get wanting to stare into the flames and zone out. My dad sometimes watched travel shows, but as a kid I didn't want to, didn't get what was so interesting. The reporter would hop on a train and stare at scenery, walk around historic sites and rave about the hotel food. I wondered why he watched such boring programmes when he didn't even plan on visiting those places. We're just looking for a brief escape from reality. Now that I'm older, I understand. Imagine yourself jetting off to vacation precisely because you're too busy to actually do it. Staring into a fire, I could almost see my father's kindly face in the flames. Yeah. Come on, it's not like he's dead or anything. Yuzuri her senpai They're quite emotional, it's nice actually. They get to eat a baked sweet potato too. Really glad you invited me. Puts a hand to her reddening cheek as I watch her affectionately. Ringo couldn't get to her feet, saying she has something else for us. You really don't need to do anything else for me, I'll pass. I brewed it specially, so I really like to have some. Picking up her watch left on the lawn, she pours me a cup of a steaming liquid. Even in this distance, I can smell a rich, astringent aroma. Here you go. Well, perhaps tea would go better with potatoes. I know you're a coffee drinker yet, Sierra Senpai. Ah. Yeah, thanks. Thank when my love for coffee is still an, is all an act, I solemnly accept a cup from her and take a drink. Mm. It's mm. quite bitter. Mm. Is that not how it's supposed to be? Mm. You milled it a lot. My eyes are on the flames, I tell her she probably went a bit overboard and the ground beans too fine. Mm. What do you mean? Mm. There are different mm. levels of grind size. Of course, grind is, as the name suggests, when you mill the beans into fairly large pieces. A fine grind is when you keep it milling down further, so the particles are really tiny. Trin's nod. When making a drip coffee, it's hard to trick trap the flavour from coarse grind. So you get a clean taste without too much bitterness. More can be extracted from a fine mill, but it produces a richer taste that's more bitter. So this came out too strong because you ever milled it. And it probably left off the heat a little bit too long so it boiled down. I see. Seeing your dejected look, I hurriedly wave my hand to dismiss what I just said. <laughs> oh no, it's not necessarily a bad thing. We had to eat something sweet, so it's probably better to have it something a little bitter to kind of balance it. She's right, Ringo. Here you go, all done. Really hard to be careful. I would admit that looks good. They're blowing into cool, let's take a big bite. Oh, this is really good. Right? Grandma took us out to make the perfect baked potato. Starchy sweetness feels in my mouth as a distinctive light charred scent of baked potato tickles my nostrils. I take another bite and another. It's just like I said, Ringo. I duff my cap to use this. What's just as you said? Baked potatoes taste like happiness. Told you to go nay and you'd smile if you ate some. She's always right. Kind of would smile back at as Ichigo puffs her cheek chest out proudly. Still, saving satisfying sweetness atop my tongue, I take a sip of coffee. 
Or just as I thought. They go together pretty well. That's good. This one's ready now, we can eat it too. Watching a split with freshly baked potato to pass the bigger half to a sister. Strikes me she really is the older one. For a while, three of us eat together in silence. Same for joy of good food. Wouldn't just know, maybe he's still worried about me too. I don't realise it, my classmates have been concerned too. She usually has some bite. If I had butter on it, it tastes totally different. Thanks. Look, so like I made you guys worry. Did you go kun? Ringo kun? We weren't worried or anything. Are you anxious about what's going, what you're going to do after graduation? Ringo! Seems like everything lets me over my concern. On top of a high school student's list of worries is usually my studies. Well, love is probably a close second. <laughs> yeah. In we were over a year ago, my homeroom teacher asked us about our plans. I see. My own vanity, my ego prevents me from telling the truth. I want to preserve myself in their eyes. I don't want to destroy the image they have of me. I mean, you're going to hold a piece of buttered potato up to my mouth. Despite feeling self-conscious, I open my lips to take it. That was kind of embarrassing. Just don't you a big living guy so pretty and earnest I could drown in them. Yatsuro senpai, my favourite but a young person worrying about my future, is told the following. You don't need to be the best. So long as you earn enough that you can treat yourself for your favourite food at least once a week, that's good enough. And I agree with those words. Chase this with my most sincerity, I find myself reassured to a point when I'm able to nod along. I'm genuinely grateful for your attempts to encourage me. What is essential is invisible to the eye. Oh, I know that, it's a from a little prince, right? Your feelings are invisible. That doesn't mean we shouldn't value also value things we can see. Lean over and take a bite from a potato ring I is holding. Watch me stuck with a soft potato into my mouth. She suddenly flashes hotly. There is a visible proof of our friendship. Your concern is so deliciously sweet. Sensing something from my expression, the twins exchange a look amongst themselves. We both break out into bright peals of laughter. Thanks. Where you do, I'm most wonderful underclassman. Before I know it, the dregs have been pouring within me, have been washed away. My heart feels like the boundless blue autumn sky. It's good clean of any lingering clouds. I'll take action and give my answer. I haven't come to this decision. I drained the last of bitter yet mild coffee. Maybe it's because I've made up my mind. I'll take a bit of stretch and look up the autumn sky. So pretty. After that morning, I watch a rose of cirrocumulus cloud, illuminated by westerly sun. This is the first time I've been able to look up the sky with any sense of peace since receiving the love letter. She joins me as I'm sta staring at the slow parade of crimson, and I invite her to watch with me. Okay. Sands looking, looking up beside me. I turn up from the sky and instead of find myself entranced by accelerated eyes, tinged with a faint madder gleam from the sun's reflection. Like me, she's also stiff from a long meeting. She stretches and turns to face me. That meeting took a really long time. The sun's already setting. The sun sets on your early morning. autumn. The season's short turn quickly. It wasn't that long ago, we were still exhausted from heat. Yeah, it's almost time for a Halloween party. We set on most of the details and now what's left is getting things ready. Once everything's decided, it's smooth sailing. All that's left is put our plans into action. After everything's said and done. What's that? I'm so relaxed when I'm watching the clouds that I accidentally voice my thoughts aloud. Some of them talking about performances. 
Oh, you've pretty much decided on a program. It's up to everyone to make their own individual preparations. So what do you go and plan this year? Yeah, so, uh, it's not fair when we only want sharing. You tell me what you're wearing first. She opens her mouth to answer and stops and puts her finger to her pink lips and something just occurred to her. It's no fun if I just tell you. Take a guess. Fairy. Flashes an impish smile. Very distracting, but I actually managed to keep my mind on guessing. Let's see. I can see you going as a ghostly Victorian lady or something. What? She stares at me, her eyes wide. I can't believe it. Are, are you psychic? If I had that kind of power, I'd be up in Vegas making a fortune. I just made an informed guess. I know my longtime friend isn't particularly good at sewing, so she probably couldn't make anything requiring elaborate needlework, which means she should definitely be making something out of clothes she already has. To be a ghost, all you need to do is rip up a dress, splatter it with blood, paint your face, and you're golden. But how do you know it would be a ghost Victorian lady? With your looks, you're unsuited to being a Japanese-style ghost. And going a Victorian lady means you get to wear a fancy dress. You, you know I'm wearing a nice dress? I don't look like that, it's just a question of style. A violent ghost in jeans and a parka wouldn't be very scary. I think I wouldn't mind seeing in jeans and a parka. It's not a fan of zombies, but now we did it down even further. I see. When you put it like that, it makes sense. A ghostly lady, huh? You're gonna look so pretty, I'm gonna look forward to a party. Plus, we won't get you anywhere. Here you go. She hands me a candy, which I gratefully accept. So, what are you going to wear? Yeah, it's kind of cliche, I wish I am going as Dracula. Probably we used a pirate costume from last year. Vlad the Impaler. It will totally suit you. She puts her hands together for form a square it holds up to the eye. Looking for it as though it would give her a dreamy outfit. Vlad the Impaler? Right. It was a real life inspiration behind Dracula. I don't have much interest in horror literature. I've ma naturally absorbed some knowledge of it through, being, through being around Neri. Might have sorted up on a little bit to impress her too. Yes. I that fabric would work perfectly for Dracula. Then before we even have time to ask what she's talking about. Let's go. Takes a hold of my arm and drags me off with her. She's clearly got some crazy scheme in mind. The room's distinctive smell is ever present. Nerys brought me to a textiles room on the second floor of the dorms. There isn't much coming and going from this room, so it probably doesn't get much of ventilation. The air is slightly stale and cool against my skin. I don't have particularly fond memories of this place. I recall being shut up in here working in my pirate costume, scared out of my wits by stories I'd heard from my older students. Look at this fabric. Oh, this work worked great for a cape. Pulls out some velvet from a shelf and shows it to me with delight. Yeah, that would be good. Right? Dracula wouldn't be Dracula without his cape. She's completely absorbed with costume right now. With one ear still in nose chatter, look over to the mannequins and we're standing in a room. I don't know if I know ghost stories. Working here at night sure wasn't fun. What was that? Oh, nothing. I was just wondering why there was no mirror here. I provided mannequins, so you'd think there would be a full length of mirror too. Would it make more sense to provide a big mirror first before providing mannequins and fitting and measuring? Now you put the fabric back down and nods, looking over at mannequins dyed blood red in the setting sun. A mirror? Yes, I thought that art too. Right. I twist a smile and talk to her features as she stares at the mannequins. Hey, have you ever heard about at one point in time there was a spike in the number of suicides happening in motels? 
Oh, what a line to end on, eh? Bye-bye.